Hello everyone, welcome to 11th standard and welcome to the world of accounts. Now, accounts is the most interesting uh, subject which you will ever face. Okay, being a commerce student, accounts is our baseline, it's our backbone. Okay, so we need to understand the subject really well. Now, every other subject, be business studies or economics or any other subject which you are studying, there is some or the other way there is a mention of this subject. So, what is this subject? We'll know. Okay, so we are starting with our NCRT book, which is the most amazing book of accountancy you will ever see. So, the first chapter of our NCRT is Introduction to Accounting. Now, what is accounting? Before going through all this theory, let's first talk and let's first understand what is accountancy and why are we studying this subject, okay? Now, suppose it's your birthday or let's suppose it's not your birthday and your grandfather gave you uh, 1000 rupees. Now, you went to the market, you bought some vegetables for 200 rupees, you bought some milk, okay, for uh, 100 rupees. You bought chocolates for yourself, again for 300 rupees. So, how much have you spent? Like you have spent 200 plus 100, 300 plus 300, 600, still 400 is remaining out of 1000. Now, when you reach back home, your grandpa asked you, where did you spend all the money? Now, it's very simple, okay. Ki, uh, grandpa, I spent 200 on this, 100 on this, 300 on this. It's just a simple answer. But just try to understand that if this thing keeps on happening on a larger scale and the transactions are into hundreds or thousands, okay, you might not be able to remember all the details. Now, accountancy comes here and solves your purpose, okay. Why? Because it helps you to know how the transactions are recorded. Now, in business, the businessman does not have all the time in the world to check all the transactions every day. So, there has to be a way where they can just look at a page and they can understand the entire position of the business. Where all they spend money, from where the money is coming in, to whom they owe or who owes to them. All these things they need to know just in a click. Okay. So, how is this possible? This is possible because of the subject called accounting. Now, generally there is a, a notion that in accounts being a practical subject, we just need to do the calculations, okay? Theory is not important, but this is like very wrong. Why it's very wrong? Because if we don't understand the theory, we will never be able to understand the practical and the good thing is the theory is really, really limited. You have so many chapters of, in accounts in 11th standard, but theory chapters are just initial chapters 1 and 2, rest all the chapters are practical. So, the best way to learn accounting is to read the theory. I am not asking you to learn, I am just asking you to read it along with me and you will be able to learn it, okay, or understand it. Let's see. Introduction to accounting. Over the centuries, accounting has remained confined to the financial record keeping functions of the accountant. That means what, where, from where the money is coming in, from where the money is going out, this much was accounting in the past. But today, rapidly changing business environment has forced accountants to reassess these roles and functions, both within the organization and the society. The role of accountant has now shifted from that of a mere recorder, a mere munimji, okay? of transactions to that of the member providing relevant information to the decision making team. Broadly speaking, accounting today is much more than just bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is what? It's just merely recording the transaction. Okay, I have done this, let's record. I have done that, let's just record. It's not accounting anymore. Okay? And the preparation of financial report. Accountants are now capable of working in exciting new growth areas such as Forensic accounting, you must have watched CID where forensic science is happening. Dr. Salunke was doing forensic science. That's the same way. There are a lot of corporate crimes are happening. Uh, Vijay Malia, Nirav Modi, they all scammed India. Okay, they scammed the banks, they uh, cheated. Now we need forensic accountants to find out their cheating. Okay, what scam they did, how they did. So, their forensic accounting. 
uh, solving crimes such as computer hacking and the theft of large amount of money on the internet. E-commerce designing web-based payment uh, system. You all have purchased uh, pizza or anything or shopped on Amazon and you must have paid some time uh, by uh, some credit card or debit card or net banking. How this happens? Here also accounting comes into play. Now, financial planning, environmental accounting, etc. This realization came due to the fact that accounting is capable of providing the kind of information that managers and other interested persons need in order to make better decisions. So, very important for accounting that it is required. Why it is required? It is required so that uh, to make better decisions and who will make these better decisions the managers will make the better decisions and other interested persons okay that means like if I want to buy a land I found the land very good I want and the uh, rates very reasonable okay I want to buy it I'll first call my accountant okay, do do I have the money to buy this or not this information who will give me my accountant will give me so this aspect of accounting gradually assumed so much importance that it has now been raised to the level of information system. As an information system, it collects data and communicates economic information about the organization to a wide variety of users whose decisions and actions are related to performance. This introductory chapter therefore deals with the nature, need and scope of accounting in this context. Now, let's See, again I am telling you, the first chapters are theory chapters. You might feel like you want to learn theory, but again I am telling you, if you understand this, the practical becomes really simple. So, meaning of accounting? Now, in 1941, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, AICPA, had defined accounting as an art. So, what is accounting? It's an art. You might be saying, why it's an art? I am not here for art. I am in commerce, but again, Accounting is an art, a way, a designer way of doing a thing. Art of what? Of recording, classifying, summarizing in a significant manner and in terms of money, transactions and events which are in, at, uh, in part at least of financial character and interpreting the results thereof. Now, what, is the, what a big definition. So, we'll just break the definition and understand it. What is the definition? The definition says, first of all, it's an art, art of recording. First of all, what is art? How to record, how to write. You cannot just write on a piece of paper that I spent 500 money or I uh, gained 500 money, earned 500 rupees. Okay? No, it's an art of how to record. Then where to write? There are so many types of money coming in or going out of the business, some for purchase, for sale, for salary, rent coming in or rent going out, commission, discounts, so many, so many type of things happening. So, where to write? So, art of recording and classifying. classifying. And after classifying, I told you I want the answer in a minute. I don't want to see all the transaction right from the scratch. Okay. So, how to summarize, make a brief summary in a significant manner in terms of money. So, accounting has to be in terms of money, whatever can be measured in money can be accounted for. That means your and your best friend's friendship, can it be measured in money? No, then it cannot be accounted for. But whatever thing which has a monetary value, can the accounting can be done for that. In terms of money, transactions and events which are in part of, part at least of financial character and interpreting the results. So, financial nature items can be accounted for. With greater economic development resulting in the changing role of accounting, its scope became broader. So, just not recording, classifying and summarizing, now the scope became broader. How? In 1966, the American Accounting Association defined accounting as the process of now, not just recording, process of identifying, measuring and communicating. Now, instead of uh, recording, classifying, summarizing, now it's what? It's identifying, measuring and communicating. What? Economic information. So, any information, just not mo monetary, any information which has economic value, okay? To permit informed judgment and decision by user of information. 
So, in this table, the process is written. The accounting process is what? Communicating accounting information to whom? Accounting information, communicating accounting information to whom? To the decision makers, whoever is trying to, that I want to buy a land or I want to sell this or I want to purchase this, I want to hire him or I want to fire him. So, decision makers, internal, external users and economic events which in turn these decisions led to an economic event and this in turn again leads to accounting process. In 1970, accounting principles board of AICP has emphasized that the function of accounting is to provide quantitative information primarily financial in nature about economic entities that is intended to be useful in making economic decision. Accounting can therefore be defined. So, this is the final definition. Uh, let us understand. So, the uh, accounting can be defined as the process of identifying, measuring, recording and communicating. So, identifying, measuring, recording and communicating the required information relating to the economic events of an organization to the interested users of such organization, such information. In order to appreciate the exact nature of accounting, we must understand the following relevant aspect of the definition. So, economic, what is an economic event? Ident what, how we identify, measure, record and communicate? What is an organization and who are the interested users of information? We will understand that. So, this is just a brief in this box, history and development, how accounting developed. Uh, you can do uh, read it for your own merit, but there is a very good line if you are reading it, this how debit and credit these words are used. These are the most common words that are used in accounting and how they came into picture, it is written in this box. So, let us read it. Accounting enjoys a remarkable heritage. The history of accounting is as old as civilization. The seeds of accounting were most likely first sown in Babylonia and Egypt around 4000 BC, who recorded transactions of payment of wages and taxes on clay tablets. Historical events reveal that Egyptians used some form of accounting for the treasuries where gold and other valuables were kept. The in charge of treasuries had to send day wise reports to the superiors known as wazirs to uh, the prime minister and from there month wise reports were sent to kings. Babylonia known as the city of commerce used accounting for business to uncover losses taken place due to frauds and lack of efficiency. In Greece accounting was used for appropriating uh, apportioning the revenues received from treasuries maintaining total receipts, total payment and balance of government financial transactions. Romans used memorandum and day book where in receipts and payments were recorded and where from they were posted to ledgers on monthly basis from 700 before Christ to 400 after the death. China used sophisticated, for, uh, sophisticated form of government accounting as early as 2000 BC. Accounting practices in India could be traced back to a period when 23 centuries ago Kautilya, a minister of Chandragupta's kingdom, wrote a book named Earth Shastra, which also described how accounting records are to be maintained. Now, just one more. Luca Piccioli's, a Franciscan friar merchant class, uh, book Summa de Arithmetica Geometria, Proportion and Proportionality, Review of Arithmetic and Geometric Proportions in Venice 1494, is considered as the first book on double entry bookkeeping. A portion of this book contains knowledge of business and bookkeeping. However, Piccoli did not claim to uh, that he was the inventor of double entry bookkeeping, but spread the knowledge of it. So, we are, there are so many ways of accounting. One way is single entry bookkeeping, which used to happen in India earlier. Other way is double entry, which is right now happening all over the world. So, uh, it shows that he probably relied on then current bookkeeping manuals as the basis for his masterpiece. In his book, he used present day popular terms of accounting debit and credit. These were the concepts used in Italian terminology. Debit comes from the Italian uh, debito, uh, which comes from the Latin debita and debio, which means owed to the proprietor, whatever 
the business has to give back to the proprietor. Why the business has to give back? Because the business generally takes money. So if I want to start a business, what I'll do? I'll make a name of the firm and I'll tell the firm, 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 take this money and let's do the business. Uh, the firm is mine, but I'm assuming it to be a live person. So whatever money I gave to the firm, the firm owes to me. So whatever owed to the proprietor. Credit comes from the Italian word credito, which comes from the Latin word credo, which means trust or belief in the proprietor or owned by the proprietor. In explaining double entry system, Piccoli wrote that all entries have to be double entries. That is, if you make one creditor, you must make some data. That means if you owe money to someone, you have to have collect money from someone. He also stated that a merchant's responsibility include to, the, to give glory to God in their enterprises, to be ethical in all business activities, and to earn a profit. He discussed the details of memorandum, journal, ledger, and specialized accounting process. Now, in our next lecture, we'll be specifically discussing economic events and other things, all these things, identification, measurement, recording, all these things we'll be discussing in our next video. Thank you.